How's it going? My name is Jeff Hoagland. I wanted to make a short video giving my thoughts on kind of the Magic Arena economy in its current state and provide kind of a concise overview of my feelings as it relates to a lot of the outrage surrounding Alchemy, Magic Arena's newest digital format as a release. Um, there's been a lot of um, insults and vitriol hurled in my direction from people who have never been in my spaces before. So I've assumed a lot of them are either people who are not familiar with me or people who are acting in bad faith. And the one that makes me chuckle the most is the number of times I have had people tell me in the last two weeks since Alchemy was out that I'm some kind of Wizards of the Coast shill bootlicker or whatever just cannot make me chuckle more. For, for people not familiar, um, I'm quite literally uh, blacklisted from getting things directly from Wizards of the Coast because of my critical feedback of their products in the past and the way in which I've presented that. And uh, I don't intend to stop giving critical feedback when I think it's deserved, but I also am not gonna shy away from calling out things that I think are good. And in this case, I think there are good things about alchemy, but there's bad things to talk about too. So just to like get the baseline out of the way, the Magic Arena economy is not friendly to the players. It is, uh, it's anti-consumer. And what I mean by that is the Magic Arena economy and the way you engage with it, whether you're a free-to-play player investing your time or you're a pay-to-play player like me investing your money, you never actually know what you're getting for the money you're spending on Magic Arena. I can tell you that like, okay, this deck takes uh, 39 rares and 12 mythics and these other cards. And to get that many wild cards, you could open like this range of booster packs. So it's gonna cost you between, you know, $50 and 150 or $250, depending on what those numbers are. And whenever you force players to engage with a system that involves gambling, that's a predatory system. It's a system that preys on people's impulses and encourages people to make decisions that they wouldn't normally make if they weren't engaging with a system that involved gambling. That being said, like gambling isn't inherently bad. Gambling can be fun under the right circumstances so long as you know your limits and you're not spending money that you don't have to spend. But at the same time, when you have a system like Magic Arena that's so incredibly expensive, and we're gonna talk about how expensive here in a minute, um, there's definitely this sense of, you know, being left out and on the out outside looking in. And it's important to acknowledge too, that when you talk about systems like Magic Arena, and this isn't exclusive to Magic Arena, like Magic Arena is just one of many mobile games that kind of operate in this marketplace like this. They're not just capitalizing on your money with this gambling system. There's also what we call fear of missing out in the industry where you have things on timers, like daily quests. If you're not doing them, you're going to lose out that keep players grinding, even when they're not really enjoying themselves. And that, that I think is one of the reasons why we see so much hostility from players who play these games because they, they kind of feel trapped, right? They're maybe not enjoying a game that they once enjoyed anymore, but this intense fear of missing out keeps them playing and they're unhappy while they're playing, thus the vitriol that they end up spewing against it because they're worried that, well, what if the game improves and it changes and I stopped playing and I wasn't farming my dailies and now I'm behind on packs so I don't have cards, so now I won't be able to play when the game is good again. So they keep themselves doing something that should be fun even though they're not enjoying themselves. And all, all of that being said, um, I think a lot of the community response to Alchemy has actually been really unfair. I think Alchemy as a format has gotten a lot of vitriol and hate for something that really isn't its fault. It's not Alchemy's fault that the Magic Arena economy leverages fear of missing out and doesn't let you just buy the cards that you want to buy. That's, that's the core to the system. And honestly, and this is the part what I'm about to say why people have been upset with me and calling me a Watsi, shall I think. I think if anything, the alchemy format actually serves to improve the economy a small amount. It doesn't go anywhere near to fix all of the problems. But for most people, if you're interested in playing alchemy as a format, the format will be more consistent and stable than standard has been for a long time. You know, we look at the last two years of standard, and we see deck after deck banned. 
And the big piece of feedback that people are choosing to uh, ring up Alchemy for and call it uh, like tar and feather, whatever, whatever you want to call it, that they want to say Alchemy is bad for is Wizards isn't giving wild cards when they rebalance cards in Alchemy. And while I think it would be fine and good if they did that, I also think it would be fine and good if they improved the economy in a lot of other ways that they're also not going to. My point and talking about this, though, is that historically speaking, when we look at standard, sure, they gave you four wild cards when they banned your field of the dead. But I still had this giant pile of Yarok field cards, for example, that were all effectively useless. So Wizards refunding me four rare wild cards when they banned my card didn't mean I could build another deck without grinding or spending more money. It didn't actually meaningfully help me because they banned my deck. Take a historic example, they banned Winota. I was left with Angrath Marauders and Fauna Shamans that I, I basically never used again. And the four mythic wild cards that Winota had to, like, gave me when she was banned didn't help me build another deck meaningfully. It didn't solve the problem. And now, how does Alchemy fix this? Alchemy, if you're not familiar, we're past the era of banning cards with the jump into the future with Alchemy. Alchemy is going to nerf cards in decks that are too strong, which that means it's going to readjust them to pull their power level down. And there's been a lot of bad faith discussion around this in the community from a lot of people where they talk about a nerf to a card essentially being a soft or shadow ban. They're like, they're basically implying that anytime a card is going to be nerfed, it's going to be rendered unplayable. And you say, well, well, Jeff, what do you, why, why do you say that that's not the case? Well, the reason why I'm going to say that's not the case is because Wizards of the Coast had an article that told us what their balancing philosophy was going to be for alchemy. And they said here, weakening cards, nerfs, is going to be the primary tool to affect the metagame. Nerfs will be aimed at cards and decks that have outsized an impact on the metagame either through their own strength and win rate or by suppressing other strategies. The goal of nerfing cards, and this is the big part, the goal of nerfing cards is to allow more strategies to compete and interact with these cards. And we are hoping that nerfed cards will continue to be relevant and powerful options in the format. So there's there's two, there's two, 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 two paths here that if you think nerfing cards are going to be shut up. And one, you think Wizards is lying outright to you in this article. And to that, I say... Wow, that is a really unhealthy, toxic outlook to have. And I think if you think they're going to lie directly to your face, I'm really confused why you would continue playing a game and supporting a company that you think would lie directly to your face. Two, you think even if this is their goal, they're going to miss the mark and, and occasionally or most of the time things are going to get over nerfed. And to which I have to say to that, yeah, I think some of the time that is going to happen. But the important thing to understand for people that haven't played a digital card game before is nerfs aren't a one and done. This is an iterative process, you know? The beautiful thing about digital design is it's not an on-off switch like ban unbanned is. If you dial a card back and it goes too far and it's no longer playable or the deck that it's in is no longer playable, you can meet, you know, pull it, you pull it from a, an eight to a six or 10 to a six, you can pull it back up to an eight in the middle and meet in the middle as you iterate over this format. And their Magic the Gathering and Wizards has some of the best game designers in the world that are so creative and inventive and they, they haven't had access to these same digital balance tools that other card games have had. And, you know, I've watched other card games like Hearthstone and Runeterra iterate on their formats and get them to neat spots. And I'm excited for Wizards to have a chance to do that with Alchemy. Um, the next thing to talk about is the fact that when a card gets rebalanced for Alchemy in Magic's digital digital setting, that rebalanced version is the only one that will be available in all of Magic Arena's digital-only formats. So take Aldrin's Epiphany, for example. Very dominant and standard, but only a B or C list player in Historic. That rebalanced Aldrin's Epiphany is the only one Historic, and Historic Brawl players will have available to them similar to Alchemy. And I, this, while from a technically correct slash purity standpoint, I think is a valid argument from a real life looking at how these cards impact these formats and looking at formats like Modern and Legacy over the years and looking at the number of cards that are newly printed standard cards that have large impacts in those formats. 
I think this is largely making an issue out of something that in the practical sense is going to be a non-issue. Historic has, you know, since the mystical archives happen, gone up in power level a pretty significant amount. And as new sets are printed into standard, fewer and fewer cards are going to impact them. So the odds that alchemy balances are going to be hitting top historic decks on average is just not going to be the average case scenario. And while I agree that it sucks if your B or C list deck gets made a little bit weaker from alchemy making a change for alchemy as a format. I think acting like this is going to be the average case scenario just isn't the truth based on what we've seen in other formats, historically speaking. Now, I mentioned at the beginning, I would share how expensive is Magic Arena if you're something of a large sea creature like myself. And these numbers won't be a surprise to people that are familiar with my content, but Magic Arena and owning every card on it is something that makes my job easier to do. And I don't wait to grind things out. I'm not a person that enjoys limited, which is the most cost-effective way to grow an arena collection. So if there's an arena card that I need, I swipe my credit card and I buy packs and I get, I get that card. And we can take a look here at my spending from the four years that I've been on Arena here as 2021 is coming to a close. And you can see that it looks like in total, I have spent a total of $6,626.54. And you can even in these numbers kind of see that uh, the cost of not keeping up consistently over the years. And for people, what I mean by that, for people I don't know, you'll notice this 2020 number is significantly lower than 2019, and it's much lower, less than half of 2021. And the reason for that is um, I was actually kind of over Magic Arena's formats at the end of 2020, and I actually took a three and a half month break. So like the last quarter of 2020, I wasn't playing, so I wasn't spending money and buying cards. And then, you know, the way the, this, these cards build on themselves, especially if you're playing uh, non-rotating formats like Historic and you wanna have a full card pool for that. When I came back in early 2021, I had to up my spending to backfill all of those cards and sets that I'd missed. So I'd, I'd wager probably five to $600 of this 2,400 would have been in 2020 had I been playing consistently through through that year. And you can kind of translate, well, not directly in money in terms of time, when I talk about that fear of missing out where players don't want to stop playing that we talked about earlier, where, you know, if you take a three-month break and then you get back, you're just that far behind and it's difficult to impossible to catch back up when you're when you're free to play in a game in a game like Magic Arena, missing that big of a gap, which is what keeps those players playing, even if they're they're not happy with it. So what was the point of this this kind of rambly talk? I don't I don't know. I just kind of wanted to have something to link for when people ask, well, Jeff, are you defending the economy? What do you think about the economy? I can give them this and say, I think there's some, some nuance that needs to go into this discussion. These are my kind of more complete thoughts on the economy and alchemy as it pertains at the end of 2021, like we have here. And I think the, the thing I'd like to close on is that the most important thing that you have as a consumer, if you're unhappy with the Magic Arena economy, or if you're happy with it, is how you spend your time and your money. You gotta, you gotta remember, every time we're spending time or money, remember, even if you're not spending money, you're spending your time. Your time makes these games money by being a player for other people. Every time we play Magic Arena, we send the message that we're, we're okay with the current system and it's, it's fine. And if you're not okay with the current system, you should invest your time and your money doing other things that make you that make you happy, especially if you're someone who hasn't been enjoying the game itself and you are just logging in to do your dailies. That that's true of any of these games. I always tell people if the only reason you log in to any free-to-play game every single day or a couple of times a week is because you need to grind or keep up with your dailies, if you aren't actually enjoying the time you spend playing a game, Games should be fun. Stop playing it. And don't just stop playing it. Uninstall it. Delete it from your devices so you aren't tempted to compulsively log back in like you have every day. Because that's why these games have daily things. They're, they're um, pattern building. They're, they're conditioning you to make that part of your routine and have it. it. It's genuinely difficult to break out of for a lot of people, myself included, who have, you know, kind of these obsessive personalities. These games lean into that well. That, that being said, um, I've I've been enjoying Alchemy. I've been enjoying uh, Historic. Um, I don't think I'm in an Envision Touching Standard anytime soon with the digital-only formats. Historic 
brawl has been fun, but I've also been enjoying other games. There's a ton of other great games. If you haven't, if you're someone that's a magic player and you haven't checked out some of my non magic content before, I've been dipping back into some Legends of Runeterra again, which is Riot's all digital game. And that game has been a ton of fun. And let me tell you, if you're looking for a card game with a player friendly economy, like Runeterra just does that better than anybody else. There's also non card games too. You know, if you just want to take a step back from these types of games, there's a ton of great story driven games out there that you can get dozens or even hundreds of hours out of uh, for a one-time purchase. Horizon Zero Dawn, Witcher 3, Final Fantasy 7R just released on PC. I played that on PlayStation a while back. There's a ton of them. And there's a playlist of single player story driven games like that that I played on the channel. And all the ones that have full playlists of all the way through our games I think are excellent. I'd recommend checking out if you're into that sort of thing. There are also other different styles of competitive multiplayer games. Pokemon Unite is one that I've been having a ton of fun with. As someone who's never touched a MOBA before, Pokemon Unite has hooked me in in a way that no other game uh, has hooked me in since uh, undergrad, back when I was playing a team game Counter-Strike Source with friends. Um, 10 minute games in that game are just chef's kiss as an adult with kids and other responsibilities. Knowing that if I sit down, the game's gonna be 10 minutes at most, and then you're done and you can play exactly one more if you want or move on or whatever. Being able to structure my time with that is great. But yeah, so I hope everybody out there has having a good holiday season. There's a lot of stuff going on at the end of the year. I hope I hope that you make sure you're happy this holiday season because you're awesome and you deserve to be happy. I know family can be tough for people around this time of year. So just to close on a positive message, remember that you deserve to be happy, whether it's spending time with people in the holiday season or playing your games. If you're unhappy in situations, pull yourself out of them. Make sure that you spend time with games and people and things that uh, build you up and make you feel good and not ones that make you feel like posting angry things on Twitter, chat because social media is toxic and it'll drag you down. So build some positivity, play things that you like, spend time with great people that you love, and uh, hopefully I'll see you around. I always read the comments down below, so if you have any thoughts on things, feel free to uh, drop me uh, a message and uh, I'll be live on stream Monday through Friday uh, like I do. So catch you around real soon, hopefully, folks. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day.